All right, before we start off with the video, I just wanted to sell you guys something. I already have seen the trailer, and it's not because I just wanted to get ahead of all everyone and be like, oh my gosh, and all that kind of stuff. But the truth is, my recording screwed up, so I ended up having to do this all over again. Like, it was pretty weird, but yeah, other than that, like, I'm gonna get over what, what these other units are, so we're just gonna do a re reaction because I know it's the boring way to do this kind of stuff. Alright. I am Nyla, Queen of Hatari. Welcome to my desert. Oh my gosh, who the fuck? It's not like I haven't watched this trailer once before and I haven't seen Nyla. Oh my gosh, all right. Since I already talked about the weapon back then, I'm gonna have to talk about it again. So, her weapon pretty much gives cancel with the remainder and stuff. It also gives out special trigger cooldown minus one. And if she initiate combat or is within two spaces of any ally, she gets an Omni plus five to herself and neutralizes effects that guarantees false follow-up attack or or prevents units follow-up attack. Pretty much not follow-up in her or something like that. And of course, because of the beast, the new beasting and all that, she deals plus seven damage when her special triggers and she neutralizes guards. So yeah, that's something. She also comes with Sturdy Surge, which is a new A skill. Pretty poggers, if you ask me. Like we got, we got like Swift Surge like last year, and now this year we're coming with Surge, Sturdy Surge. But personally, I think Swift Surge is a bit better. She also comes with a low speed defense three, which is pretty normal. And she also comes with glare, of course, pretty normal for Nyla. But yeah, that's pretty much her base kit. It's pretty, oh, it's pretty old. It's pretty good. To the wolves. I may be unaccustomed to this weapon, but I will not need excuses. Carla fan rejoice, your alt has finally arrived in this in this banner. Of course, at first glance, her base game might not seem like pretty impressive, but once you start reading her weapon and all that, you start to realize just how, how pretty good her base kit really is right now. So her weapon pretty much accelerates special cooldown, trigger minus one, which is pretty good, especially since the fact that she has special spiral on her. Not only that, but she also, at the beginning of, the, of a turn, she ended up getting herself minus two cooldown and if she initiate combat she ended up getting attack speed plus six to herself and deals damage to the number percentage of her speed when in special triggers so yeah she will deal a lot of damage when she procs her special hence why she has she comes with special spiral three and draconic aura with Draconic Aura, that becomes a two-turn special, and because of her weapon lowering that down by minus two, she gets it instantly and instantly again every single turn, or every single combat. And not only that, but with Odd Tempest, if you have her on a defense team or something like that, she is going to end up like, she's going to end up like catching people off guard with that third extra, that extra movement, and she will end up just, nuke, just nuking them. But yeah, that's pretty much her gimmick with this one. She could be a pretty good girl force with this too. Like, no, seriously, she can be a really good girl force. All right, on to the next unit. Do me the honor. Oh my gosh. Yep, this is our homeboy Zane. I, the first time I reacted to this, I was like, my god, this dude is about to be summoning some, some sort of hoodoo doo doo v like demon or some sort of sting or something like that. But nah, my boy Zane, right back out here from Mystery of Fire Emblem. He about to be showing everyone what's up with that new staff. Yep. You Does know what it I even said. matter who wins? But I guess I can't just watch, now can I? That's right, Zane is a staff unit. And not she and he doesn't come in with just any old staff. This staff is pretty good, especially for calf staffs. 
and you want to know the reason why the reason why he comes with such a good staff is because he ended up not only dealing like seven damage and inflicting it to other people like a savage blow effect or something like that but he also inflicts deep wounds that's right this dude has a staff that literally deals savage blow and fatal blow so <laughs> for any other staff cap that you have built up this unit is going to be incredibly awesome meaning if you have like a calf team with a stat with fatal flow you could actually switch that out for panic for panic smoke or something like that and then you have this unit this staff here inflicting the deep wounds effects he's gonna and he's gonna be like damn you like this is such a good and heritable weapon for staff cast, especially for ARD and AR offense. Well, not offense, never mind. Forget what I said about that. ARD is definitely the place for this staff to be used at. And pretty much any scenario, if you could stop the healing of a unit, is pretty good. Not only that, but he comes in with a standardized staff unit build with Physic Plus, Miracle. Of course, it's pretty weird for a staff unit to come with defense rest solo 3. And not only that, but a Dazzling Staff, that's like a 4-star demo now. So yeah, you could pick up Dazzling Staff for 4-star, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. I would highly recommend going for his staff. You have a beautiful voice. Oh my gosh, who would have guessed? I have never, like, when I first reacted, I was like, I never thought these two would have been a duo together. Like, this literally came out of the left field. Uh, thank you. I will help. Okay, probably for everyone's reaction, you're all going to be like, yo, what? That's right. Azura is by far one of the best dancer in the game. He outclassed Sigurd by a whole bunch. Well, not outclassed since there's two of them, but he's like, like if I were to compare, if I were to say which dance cap is better, I would say this one is. And I'm gonna go over her kit right now. So she comes with Dancing Flame. It gives her drill plus three attack. Not only that, but if she ended up singing or dancing to someone, I don't know why they put those two together, since it's just only great ways. But she ends up dancing. She ends up granting plus six to any adjacent allies for a single turn. Pretty much, a, pretty much, yeah. And then not only, not only that, but if she gets into a combat, she also gets attack speed plus six. Pretty normal dancing dancer weapon or something like that. You know, being supportive but also giving that buff for herself as well during combat. That's pretty good. But the thing that separates her from Sigurd is great waves. We all seen the skill in Legendary of Zero, so there's no need for me to tell you, but she will grant an extra move space to a unit. That's right. While Sigurd herself, and the reason why I say she is better than Sigurd is because she's also a Cav Dancer. And the fact that she comes with great waves makes her by far one of the top tier dancer in the meta. She literally could be used in ARD effectively well with great waves and stuff like that. Mostly in Anima season due to the fact that nobody could run Mila in there. But yeah. This unit is pretty, po pretty, 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 pretty poggers. That's a lot of pretties I've said there. But not only that, she comes with Fury 4. She comes with SR Far Trace. And she also brings along Crossbow Res. I like when the, in the previous recording, I still say, I don't know, I don't get why people think the Crossbow skills are good. Like, I feel like dry skills are a bit better, in my opinion, due to the fact that they give like plus 4 to both yourself and your allies as well but crossbow only gives plus five to only allies so i feel like i feel like crossbow has a bigger range but it doesn't also benefit that unit while joint drive you benefit each other within at least two spaces and i feel like units are within two spaces of and stuff like that but yeah this unit is like beef like not only is she like a good unit but she's also a good fodder too you could just get free four and sr far trace three on a unit and that's it but I would not highly recommend foddering her unless you have like two copies of her or something like that. Because not only that, she is by far one of the best dancers within this game. Ugh, what am I saying? <laughs> and of course, just like how the meta says, she, her harmonized skill is, of course, another boring self dance. No, well, not self dance. Is a her harmonized skill is another boring dance skills to any allies with the highest HP within two spaces. 
that have already acted. But they have to be in the same title as her, which is one of the major drawbacks for this. So yeah, she is pretty good as long as you have Fates or Radiant Dawn units for a dancer. But this is why I highly recommend using her more on ARD than ARO, because I feel like there are a lot better dual units that are more suited for ARO, like Gale First Dress, than she is. But ARD is where she shines the best, especially with Great Ways giving the extra movement. No cap. She literally just folded Sigurd. Let our voices ring out. Listen to our song. Looks like it's my turn. You can do it! And of course, the free TT unit is going to be a Dagger Calf, which is pretty disappointing in my opinion. Like in my last video, I did say that we would, like during my re-video, we probably might get it like the next free TT unit or something like that. It's going to be garbage. And the reason why is because the last banner we ended up having Fafnir, who is by far, is by far, in my opinion, one of the best Cav daggers to use. So yeah, this unit probably might be coming in with a like incredibly good fodder like his dagger and the reason why i'm saying this is because just like how zane came in with the fatal blow staff or whatever this unit might come in with a fatal blow dagger meaning if you have a cab like a cab dagger you could just plop this weapon on them and then they probably might just do do like the minus seven inflict minus seven on both defense rest as well as fatal blow and minus seven to damage that is what i'm getting from this weapon Meaning this inheritable weapon is pretty good for supportive use, especially on ARD. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this this unit on the right. I don't know who he is. I think he might be an Arcanea unit. That's just on me though. But yeah, if I were to say if you should pull on this banner, I would just say if you were, if you're like looking for a new meta defining unit for your ARD or if you're hardcore on ARD, I would highly go with Azura and probably Zane too. If you're a fan of Nyla and Carla, that this is your time to shine. Like no doubt about it. Like Carla's all is really good. Like especially her weapon, she could literally be a good Gale Force. Nyla too, of course. But yeah, this banner is pretty good. With, it's pretty good, but I will not. But personally, I will not summon on it because I have priorities, and I'll probably just use my free summon for Azura. And I will hope that the TT unit is pretty good. But yeah, this unit per personally, I'm not gonna summon on it. Like this banner, I mean, this banner, I'm not gonna summon on it. I'm just gonna just just do the TT, and that's it. But other than that, the one thing I don't get is the theme of this banner. It looks like it's like a dancer theme banner or something like that, or like a desert attire. It's just like a plague, another plague banner because I don't understand this at all. Oh, whatever. This might be like another sick. I don't know. It might be something else. This all oh, this might be a Nyla banner actually, like like Nyla somewhere or something like that. But I don't remember. But either way, this banner is okay. There's nothing more to that.